So hello and a warm welcome to the Refreshing Views Observatory. So although we're in the observatory today, I've only actually rolled the roof off so that I can have enough light to pack my kit up because this week we're off to the Autumn Equinox Star Party in Norfolk. Now every year, well subject to Covid restrictions, we have this star party in England and it's amazing. Normally when I'm out here, I'm observing by myself. I'm up looking at the beauty of the night sky, but I'm by myself. If you go to a star party, you literally have hundreds of fellow observers there are hundreds of telescopes all in this one area and we're all out there all enjoying the beauty of the night sky all observing imaging different objects so it's really good fun thoroughly recommend it if you haven't been to one before so we can just need a coincidence of clear skies no moon good company and nice optics so we're going to have three of the four uh, in that the weather forecast isn't that good so i'm going to leave the big stuff i'm going to leave the c11 i'm going to leave the eq6 behind because I don't really want to tear it all down just for it to sit in a car and not be used. So I'm going for the lightweight setup. I've got my telescope in a suitcase, which I tested when we went to Tenerife. I'm going to use this setup again. And I don't know any other instrument that can go from low power scanning the beauty of the Milky Way, the double cluster, up to high power viewing of the moon and planets. And can then also be configured for solar observing in the day. I'm really enjoying using this little uh, refractor. So I have splashed out on a my Optron Star Tracker. So really excited to be using this. So this, you put the camera on top here, and then that has a motor inside that then follows the star. So this will track the stars. So I want to get some really nice time lapse of this, include that in the video. So the bonus for me this weekend is that Lawrence, my friend Lawrence is coming to. Now you've seen his setup. He's got an observatory, the Black Bear Observatory and he has a little APO refractor that he does the live stacking. So he's of taking lots of long duration pictures, he's taken a whole series of short pictures and the software is in stacking them on the fly in the field. So you get the beauty of observing that you can look at different objects, but you get the power of the camera. So we're both going to observe the Veiled Nebula, the 5,000 year old supernova remnant in Cygnus. I'm going to put the eyepiece in the, in the, in the telescope and I'm going to take the time to make a nice visual sketch and he's going to put his camera in and we're going to compare and contrast the different approaches. This is the new toy. Ooh, ooh, ooh. That's the Star Tracker. North somewhere over there, isn't it? Oh. There we have it, one tracking mount. So this is the new Star Tracker. This is an Ioptron Star Tracker. Take the dust covers off, that's the poloscope. Poloscope, you point towards Polaris. And you can adjust the camera, the ball head, wherever you want to look at in the sky. And then, I'd look at the back of it. So all the controls are in there. So it's the on-off switch. You can set it for solar, lunar, half-time if you want to do some landscape photography, or one-time, so that's why I've set up one. North and south, so you can adjust it for the different hemispheres. And there's a fast-forward and rewind, depending on which way you want to go. And just charge it from there. So it's got a built-in battery, it doesn't need a power supply. Just turn that off. You can adjust when you're looking at Polaris, when you're trying to find do the polar alignment, you've got some slow motion controls. So that you can then and that adjusts the altitude. So because this is a star party in England, I'm just off to go and pick up my dew controller and my dew heater from Tim at Dew Control. So this is corporate headquarters then, isn't it? This is corporate headquarters. Dew Control International. <laughs> And it clearing up the puddles and the spills? Yes. So which one is this? This is the Kendrick? No, no, this isn't the Kendrick. It's a Chinese manufacturer. I can't remember who I got it from now. Um, but uh, yeah, it's the version one of this sort of removal. And this was, uh, this was your duck, duck paddling pond, was this it? This is my paddling pond, yes. Yeah, five pints of water I got rid of really? just now. There's so what happens? You, un you unscrew the lid? Yeah, basically it uh, velcros in four places. Uh, oh, I it's see. Non-stretchy elastic now because it's so old, <laughs> um, and that just gives you a flip-top lid. Oh, you've got uh, your set up inside. inside. Yeah. So, uh, oh, gotcha. Oh, and this is the. Oh, very nice. It needs to be vented anyway, so let's remove the top. If I wasn't filming, I'd come and help you. You see. Right. <laughs> so, has this been used in anger then this week? Nope. Nope, so arrived Tuesday, didn't set up on Tuesday night. 
Um, but there was two hours of clear, clear skies. On oh, you, oh, you've been, oh, so you've been here for a few days then? Uh, yeah, yeah, we've had nothing since. Yeah. <laughs> so Blue skies now? Absolutely. So fingers so, crossed for tonight. We'll uh, fingers crossed, eh? Might get something. I haven't even polar aligned yet. <laughs> we'll see. Um, yeah, looking forward to using the SI Air Plus. Oh, where's that? Is that's the so underneath that's the, little, the scope, isn't block it? Just underneath the scope there. Yeah. Um, so that's feeding two dew heaters. It's feeding the. Uh, and do you know a good source of dew heaters and dew controllers? I don't know where you could possibly get those from. <laughs> <laughs> Talking to <of> which. <laughs> yes. <laughs> for you. Yeah. Absolutely. Of course. Absolutely. So Tim uh, also runs a clear. So what you sell clear skies at Kelling, don't you? I do not sell clear skies <laughs> at Kelling unless you pay me a vast amount of money that I might be able to sort something. You sort you put, put an application in. <laughs> Tells you whether it's overcast, dry, light. Uh, gotcha. so currently, whilst it's light, it won't trigger the, the relay. Uh, so it has to be dark, it has yeah. to be dry, and it has to be clear. Gotcha. Uh, uh, okay. If those three conditions uh, occur, then it closes the relay. Um, this box detects that relay and, uh, and then proceeds to send text messages out to everyone that happens to be in the list in that box. Oh, wow. So, and I add those, uh, those numbers manually. Oh, fantastic. Box, sending texts. So, so. Shall I give you so, my mobile number? Yes, you and can. And then you send me a text um, if it's clear. If I'm happy to do that straight away. So, uh, yeah, you're going to read it out for the internet to. Yeah, yeah, I'm actually, I'll pause this bit. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, all right. <laughs> so, we've got Nagler eyepieces, diagonal, zoom eyepiece, dew controller, big 100 degree wide field eyepiece. Final view in the corner, UHC filter, times two Barlow, the Barlow that goes on the zoom eyepiece and the other Nagler eyepiece and one 90mm F6 refractor. Red dot finder go on top. Cuddly toy. Cuddly toy, cup of tea, holder, drinks holder, dew, heaters go in there. Sketching kit and notebook are in there. Spare camera batteries live in there red flashlight lives in there so all the observing kit goes in one case one case to rule them all i'm just going to take my top of the range tripod cover off does that work okay yeah there's a nice puddle of water in the oh, on the top of the oh, I check that on the as well. tip it out do you want a bit of a kitchen roll or toilet roll? To I'll just shake it. So this is my travel setup. I've left the Celestron C11 back at home. And this is a William Optics 90mm Megray. So really nice views. I can go from 20 times power, looking at you know, open clusters in the Milky Way, looking at the Pleiades. And then as you can see there, I've set up for some planetary observing. I've got two times two Barlows and a 30mm Nagler, so we are watching the shadow transit on Jupiter last night. And that is all on the Altaz AZ-4. So no motors, no tracking, no polar alignment, just literally push it to the sky to whatever you want to look at. So that's my red dot finder, Barda Sky Surfer finder. Really nice, so simple to use. And that's all there is to, oh, no, I must mention, definitely need some dew heaters. It's very damp. So we've had some rain recently. And that's the W&W Dew Heaters, got that from Tim Duke at Dew Control. And obviously one at that end. And there's the Dew Controller balanced in there. And that's all driven from this Talent Cell battery pack. And that's a 9 amp hour. So plenty of juice, that runs for ages, days, nights, hours. So an easy to carry, optically excellent setup. I don't know any other instrument that you can go for 20 times power up to 150 times power and that can still fit in a suitcase and go on board an aircraft for, for holidays. And that's where Lawrence sets up over there, that's his EAA rig, that's where we're doing the live stacking of the Comet. This is a Celestron AVX, this is the grab and go or grab and, 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 and struggle. This is an 80mm Mead 5000, it's a three element EDO at Pro at APO. Uh, and I understand you too have an ASI 294. It is, obviously the camera of choice. The camera of choice for the disc earning, <laughs> yeah, for the gentleman the, astronomer. And the, um, the pole, pole master, master, which is also the must have accessory, obviously. 
So what I love about coming to star parties is the chance just to walk around in the daytime. We're going to have a look at some of the telescopes, going to meet some of our old friends, there's a talk on as well, and then we're going to go and have a raffle and probably not win anything. Hello. 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 You daft dog at me. Oh, they're in the back of the car. So who gets tired of this first then? That's one sleepy dog. Does it look very comfortable? So one of the things we saw when we were on our walkabout yesterday, and I'm just going back up to go and film, is the most amazing solar telescope, most amazing solar telescope I've ever seen. And it's got all different uh, filters on, different things for different wavelengths all through this turret. Absolutely incredible setup. We're going to go and have a look at it now. So what wavelengths have you got? So you've got the quark, H-alpha, yeah. magnesium, sodium. And that's all different layers in the all, sort of solar... You get different views of the sun on all of them. That is very similar to white light and helium. Magnesium, I've not really worked out what it does to be fair, but it was worth a play. Because I've got another filter system which has got H alpha, calcium, helium and H beta on it. So it gives you a, a nice full run. That is so good. Nice. As you say, you don't have to worry about dark adaptation. Yeah. You know, you're not getting cold. You know. No. Sit there with a bottle of fizz. So if you pull it up, the light goes straight through for H alpha for atmosphere and promise. And you can then it's just too tightened up at the moment. And you can drop it down and move it to either magnesium. So you got all sodium. the different wavelengths just on that twiddly thing. Yeah. <laughs> that is so cool. And then the, you've got a Hinode uh, guider which will fit into the drive drive port, which unfortunately this one hasn't got, so I'm looking at upgrading this to put the Gemini 2 on it, uh, Gemini 1 on it, and then use the auto go point for tracking. Diagonal spinny jobs, but A, they don't come up, and B, they're too expensive. Somebody started to make one, and in fact there's two things for the quad, one that rotates that way, and another hexagonal thing that goes that way, but that came out after I decided to do this. So that's all I could think of doing. So fans like were in the magazines in the 90s, weren't they? They yeah. didn't have a forest fire or something. Oh yeah, it all got burnt to, burnt to pieces. Very sad. Incredible engineering. Is it light? Is it? A, it looks a fairly hefty chunk of alley on the back. It's 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 all right. It, it is substantial. Is probably a good word to put it. It's properly engineered. And I had it all cleaned up and uh, all the alignments and stuff checked out by Ez Reed, he did a lovely job on that. And I reconditioned the tack, because I bought the tack. When I bought the tack, it had a huge defect on the, in between a couple of elements it was separating. And somebody had used an angle grinder to <gasps> trim off the end of the tube, obviously, to get it in a box. Oh. God, no, no. Use an more. angle grinder on a tack? <laughs> anyway, it was lying there poorly, and I, I bought it for 350 quid. Ez has cleaned it all out, you couldn't even see where the defect was on the front and I managed to pick up uh, another dew shield. That's beautiful isn't it? So I just uh, sort of brought it back to life. Yes. Uh, what, what was your name sorry? Kevin. Nice to meet you Kevin. <laughs> nice to meet you sir. So it's getting towards dusk we're going to go and set up now and um, the skies really aren't looking the best. It, it's clear, it's vaguely clear. Lots of sucker holes and you know, patches in between. So for my visual setup, I should be all right. I think the images are going to suffer. You're not going to get enough time on target, but it is what it is. So the objective is then to try and catch uh, the Veil Nebula. And I'm also going to try and catch some of the Jupiter shadow transits, some of the moons passing in front of Jupiter. But we'll see what the sky allows us to do. So I've just been observing the shadow transit of uh, which one is it? I thought of Europa. So I've just been observing the shadow transit of Europa as it passes over the cloud tops of Jupiter. You can see two moons and Jupiter in the middle and then just in the middle was a little tiny little ink spot. Um, and the clouds are not the best, loads of sucker holes but it's good enough for observing. 
You can hear that tawny arm, yeah. can't you? Oh, wow. So that's what I like about this high piece there. It's really good for zooming in. There you go, get a look at that. There's, Io's got so much closer. Four of the moons. And then Io's the one that's closest in. It's the... And that's going to move across, well, another two hours yet. Yeah, so it's still getting closer, isn't it? What do you think of the view then? It's great. I say, are we... Yeah, these, these clouds are just frustrating, aren't they? Yeah, there's not much you can do about yeah, it, is there? Teaser, and then and then they they come across. That's magnificent. That. Yeah, you lose the star field, but oh, uh -huh. yeah. You lose the whole you planet. Lose the whole planet thing looking at that sky. So under these dark, but but sucker hole skies, I'm still going to go for the Veil Nebula. Now this is a 5,000 year old supernova remnant deep in the Milky Way, deep in the constellation of Cygnus. I find it incredible that with amateur kit, you know, with this small telescope, I can see the ex gently expanding shells from a 5,000 year old supernova remnant. Now you definitely need a filter to pick this out. It's quite a faint, quite a low surface brightness. And with a filter that just passes through the wavelengths from the, from the deep sky object itself and it blocks everything else, makes it easier to see. So I'm sketching through the gaps, I'm sketching through the gaps in the clouds making the most of these clear patches, trying to pick out the, the faintest of detail. So I'm using the bare minimum amount of red light, letting my eyes adjust to the dark, taking the time to pick out all these details. And that's my sketch. And what I'm going to do now is scan that in, hard inverted in Photoshop, tidy it up, and there it is. And I find this a very personal experience. I've taken the time to observe this object, and it's helped me uh, pick out all those subtle details. So the first glance just simply aren't visible. Now Lawrence, who's observing just over there, has just called me over. So let's just walk round. So lots of drifting cloud, not the best of nights, but better than rain and wind. So let's go and see what Lawrence has got. There's a telescope in there. That's the Mead 80, isn't it? Yep. Mead 80 with your Zwoo. Zwoo 294 MC Pro. Just just plate solving to make. Goodness sure. me, there's lots of cables down there. Yeah. Just plate solved. There's a little patch of how the plough is visible now. Oh, great, thank you. Oh, the Milky Way is coming out again. Okay. Have you got your red screen on still? The... I have, which is going to be awkward because it, it, it does the colours in, so I'm just going to get rid of that for a moment. Shh, don't tell anyone. Shh, don't tell. Shh. You're no tell. So, that is beautiful, Lawrence. So I can't, you can see it building there, can't you, on the screen? Yeah. When you were shooting the witch's broom, you could just... So it started off with the, the star at the top of the broom, which I can name 61, isn't it? Oh, the, the bright one, yeah, the one yeah. alongside it, isn't yeah. it? So you, you started off with just the star, and then you got the faint bits of it's wisps to the broom, it, yeah. and it started building up bit by bit. I can't believe I've spent 45 minutes trying to capture that in you know, an eyepiece and the, the you know, pencil and note paper. Oh. And look at it, Lawrence just blows his socks off with it in 30 seconds. Yeah, we 15 seconds. 50. How many exposures is that then? Uh, that e that's six stacked. It's, it's, it's clouding out. So it's, it's uh, of course, yeah. But that's six, so that's um, Do you know what? I might think 90 that, seconds. I'm thinking that's swinging across to Pleiades. Oh, they're nice. It's nice and bright, and they look really well. He says as it disappears. Yeah. The <laughs> well, there's a IO shadow transit on Jupiter. I thought, well, I'll just go and enjoy that, but that's disappeared as well behind the clouds. Cool. I just love the fact you've got the colours in there as well. There's the, there's the beastie, straight away. Is that where it is? Oh, fantastic. So let of course, that's a tiny little smudge, isn't it? Oh, let us um, just give that little bit of love. Okay, so. Oh, there we go. So they all look quite 
It's amazing to think that you're catching this in the little 80 millimeter refractor and there's Owen with his is it 24 inch trying to get the same thing yeah so that's it so yeah little, that's beautiful isn't it let's just get a little bit of finesse on that so we've got a little bright nucleus and a little short fan shaped tail no why it's quite so grainy it's, it's still quite faint though, isn't it, looking it up? It was still about mag 12. Yeah, it's not normal. Well, and, and also you're looking through a thin layer of cloud. Yeah. So we've just waited for the cloud to, that little patch of cloud to disappear. And now look at it, we've got a little fuzzy, fuzzy tail. So bearing in mind, Lawrence, hardly anyone is outside observing and you've imaged a 12 magnitude comet. Yeah. I think it's more the kit than me. Well, you know where to look and to you've fair. stretched it all out. Yeah. You have to send me a copy of that, that looks awesome. Yeah, well, that's only, that's only got uh, five stacks, so that's... So how, long you, how long of an exposure? 15 seconds. That's 15 like seconds. 75 seconds of... So it's already appearing after a minute. Definitely a comet, a little stubby tail, and a tiny little nucleus. But that's, yeah, you, you catch it. I mean, you can't really see many stars in that patch of the sky, yet your telescope's punching through it. Yeah. Set and some processing, you probably get that, that going all the way. So it does extend beyond that star, doesn't it? Yeah. You, you can see that, can't you? I don't know how well it's turning up in the camera. Let's zoom in a little bit. There we go, there's a little part. over again. We're losing it. Yeah, a little bit of opacity. So, yeah, a little bit of... That's cool though, isn't it? I mean, a little bright nucleus and short, short fan-shaped tail. Short, long... Mm. Blah, 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 blah. Yeah, yeah. yeah That's easy for me to say. <laughs> a little little tail extended outwards so if you have a star party near you i can thoroughly recommend a visit even though we didn't have the best weather we still managed to observe all the usual autumn highlights plus we did that sketch of the veil nebula Norris did his live stacking we saw the 12th magnitude comet we watched the shadow transit on jupiter we saw some amazing setups we got the chance to look through some amazing setups Went to the talks, went to the trade stands, there's some second-hand gear that are for sale as well. So if you've got a star party near you, I can thoroughly recommend it. So as always, don't forget to subscribe. I look forward to bringing you more videos. So coming up, we've got some Jupiter imaging. We've done some planetary observing, getting up early as well to see Mars. Uh, I've got the new Herschel Wedge, one of the things I bought second-hand at Kelling Heath. And I'll do some solar observing as well because coming up next month, so coming up later this month in October, we've got the partial solar eclipse. So I'm keeping my fingers crossed for some clear skies. All right, don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.